Well, good day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, look, I thought that um, I might, uh, given that I'm not going to be flying for a little while, as you can see, <laughs> I thought I might um, take a few videos to, as I'm rebuilding the sim, might uh, add some value by showing you some of the elements uh, that I've got, I guess, in the design that I've pulled together. Now, as you know, this is all on Fusion 360, um, but I thought it might be useful just to ta perhaps take you through some of the elements that I've got uh, now that I'm rebuilding it uh, in the next room along in the house. So um, uh, let me uh, just explain a few things. Obviously, I've just put a couple of little bits back on just for now, but really all I've done uh, uh, this morning is um, move it in and I'm now just assembling the base frame once again, as you can see, all clamped up and so on. So I'll, you look, I'll, I'll stay in metric because that's what we use here in Australia. So um, you can do your own um, imperial conversions, but um, the main timber frame itself is just effectively, um, it's just a treated pine because uh, it's relatively light um, and easy to, easy to work. And I have just used 70 millimetres by 35 millimetres um, all throughout the frame. So the whole frame section is exactly that. Um, and realistically, uh, you know, if I can show you perhaps from, from this side here, if I just show you the side panel there, obviously I've got cladding over it at the moment, but you can see the idea uh, with what I've done um, and, uh, and moving through to the front. Um, if anyone wants any dimensions and so on, I'm happy to give that there. And obviously, you know, I've, I've uh, uh, you know, just got that straight 75. I had a couple of notch cutouts through, through here. Um, just for the sake, the sake of the front monitor to get that down. And obviously I think I spoke about that before. So it's 70 by 35 millimeter in terms of frame. What else have I used on this? Well, look, um, again, uh, you know, you, you can imagine um, it's fairly, um, well, it was fairly, you know, initially it was fairly wobbly that way. So to fix that up, I've, I've braced uh, the back of the sim um, just with some, they're a bit fancy, but these are, a powder coated steel um, and uh, you know they're they're a 300 millimeter long bracket um, and I've got one of those either side these used to be white by the way but one of the things I'm going to do now that I've got all this apart is I'm going to paint it all so I'm going to paint all the frame black I probably won't paint these four bits because you won't see any of that because it'll be under the floor but all the sides and down through the back here I'm going to paint all this um, as I put it all back together again so those brackets were also used. Um, I also just uh, used, uh, you know, these little, um, what are they, sort of U-shaped brackets. They're very similar to what you use on an outdoor um, timber decking. And uh, I effectively, you know, had this main long brace either side and used these and then just screwed the floor plates into that. And these work really well. And so I've got the series of those. Um, because basically the way it is, is it, it's, it's the side panels of the primaries. So you have two side panels, obviously identical, but mirrored. Um, and then it's infilled by, you know, the roof panels and the floor panels like that. And then, you know, that's how they just all slot in all the way along. Um, now the other piece that I've used is just, again, on the, on the roof side of it, it's just some simple, uh, these are just uh, prefabricated and you can get these adjustable little uh, steel brackets here. Um, so these are quite useful. Again, I use those and I just obviously attach the timbers to the back and then run them along as well there through there. And then I've just got this clamped up as I'm now pulling all this back together again. Fortunately, uh, I've got all the match holes working pretty well and all the timbers were marked. So um, it's actually going together at this point relatively well. I think that that won't be the issue. The issue will be more about the, uh, the electronics. <laughs> But we'll get to that in another episode. So that's really it um, uh, for the frame. Uh, and what else have we got? I mean, obviously, cladding. Um, cladding material that I used here is, uh, is a 6mm MDF uh, all painted up. So that's just a 6mm MDF. And I think I've spoken about this before. These little trims around here, uh, they were 3D printed. Just effectively just little cappings that I just had a series of those. And I just wrapped that around um, like that. And... That's fundamentally it. Um, yeah, not much to us. A couple of other small bits, I guess you could argue, just for strengthening. I put these in as I was progressively moving through it. So again, I couldn't obviously put these in here because they'd interfere with the floor. Um, but in the, you know, in the middle of the sim. Uh, so just some, again, little steel angles here, just to give it a bit more rigidity and strength um, as I was doing it, because obviously you don't want it wobbling um away so really 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 all that's that's it you know there's another one of those uh little little outdoor pieces there um 
So again, this is just another strut piece towards the front that just keeps the front, so once it's all tied in, it just keeps it nice and stable. Yeah, as I said, pretty crude, but it, it won't, you know, I think once it's all painted up, it'll actually look pretty good. Um, certainly uh, a bit better than when I uh, go for Mark II on it, yeah. So there we go. I'll have all this uh, painted up soon, and I'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll move into phase two, and um, as I'm doing things, I'm also going to be, um, you know, like, for example, the console needs a bit of work, the centre console. Um, I've got other bits and pieces that I want to trim up and fix up as I'm putting together. So I'll do separate episodes on those as well and explaining what I'm doing and, and how I've actually built them as well. Hope that was of help. Probably a bit waffly, but uh, there you go. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Uh, I forgot to mention a couple of other bits I've got. I've got these little, uh, these again also steel, um, just to tie in the, I mean, you could obviously notch the timbers in if you were to do it really, really professionally, but I wasn't that professional with it. Um, so I just use these little plates here and then you can see I've screwed them either side just to hold the frame together. Um, so a lot of those were used, fairly common. And again, the beauty of these things is you've got multiple holes and you can get them in different lengths as well. So that was handy. Uh, and similarly with the, um, again, just to give it rigidity because what, where, they, where they are good, sorry, my camera work, where these are good for, I guess, just for holding things together, they lack rigidity, you know what I mean? So you generally have a T-section or something, but you can actually get these in angles. So here's, here's an example. Um, I'll use it at the back here, sorry, the camera work. But here's an example um, of the angular ones. And what I did is I put two of them back to back like that um, and effectively just use those and sandwich those together. So you get like a nice T-section and now you've got rigidity in that direction so that this won't bend um, because obviously these you know lack rigidity and they can flex that way whereas now you've got effectively a stiffener down here and so you what you won't you'll get that rigidity through there so that was that was really useful and i use that throughout you know a fair bit of the the outside here just to give it that strength even towards the front um, you know i've put these back to backs here and so that was very useful and obviously down the bottom so anyway